According to the American Heritage Foundation, the average American will pay $534,000 in total taxes over their lifetime. If you're married, you double that number. That's your hard-earned money gone to taxes. The average married couple pays over $250,000 of taxes unnecessarily throughout their lifetime. Those are the averages. If your income and retirement savings are above average, then your total loss to taxes will be much higher. For most people, the number one expense in retirement will be taxes. This is because about 90% of all retirement savings are in tax-deferred retirement accounts, such as 401ks, 403bs, TSPs, and IRAs. There are 4.4 million words in our tax code. It is a massive and a complex system. It's important to understand that there are hundreds of tax incentives in the tax code. Incentives are to encourage specific behaviors. Problem is that your typical accountant, tax preparers, CPAs, or other tax professionals are almost always reactive rather than proactive. They are typically looking at the tax obligations for the current year rather than proactively planning for the future. Now, I'm going to include a video clip here from a webinar that I recently did where I showed an example of a couple that could have saved a good amount of money in taxes with better planning. In this example, I'm going to use very modest retirement income numbers. And so if your retirement will be larger than what I show in this example, then your potential tax savings would be much larger as well. After this clip, I will conclude with some additional thoughts. So the formula for determining what your social security benefits, how much of your social security benefits in retirement will be taxed is based on this provisional income formula, okay? And so what they do is they're going to take 50% of your social security benefit amount. They're going to take any ordinary income. And then it doesn't have to be earned income. It would include earned income. Any IRA distributions, distributions from 401ks, pension income, rental income, anything like that is going to be considered ordinary income. And then also including any dividends or capital gains that you have, those are going to be added into the formula, as well as any non-taxable interest, such as like from muni bonds, where there is some tax advantages. And some people think, well, that's tax-free. It's not fully because they're going to take 100% of that and they add it into this formula. And so then that will produce your provisional income number. And then these are the thresholds. If you're single or if you're married, these are the dollar amounts of that provisional income number. And so you're either going to be paying up to 85% of your social security benefits will be taxed as ordinary income, uh, depending on where you fall, right? So let me give you an example that I think will kind of help. I like to use a whiteboard and... Since that's hard to do here on screen, I've got some slides going through this example, okay? So on the left-hand side, we're going to be looking at a, a married couple, and we're going to calculate their provisional income number. And then on the right-hand side, we're going to be calculating their ordinary income tax and then look at what the tax burden is, okay? So it, with this couple, we're going to say that they have a Social Security total combined annual amount of 30000 coming in. The, the husband has a pension of 12000 per year, and the wife takes 5000 out of her IRA each year. So they're living on 47000 in this example. How much of that, so the question here, how much of their Social Security is going to be taxed in this scenario? Now, so if we come back to the formula, it's only going to be 50% of their Social Security benefit, right? So we take 15000 off of that thirty. Subtract that off of the 47. Uh, so their provisional income number is 32,000. So that puts them right at that first tier. And so in reality, if that was their exact provisional income number, $1 of their social security benefits would be taxed. So we'd have to be 31,999 to, to, to be where we'd say there is zero tax on that. But 32,000 is, is very close to zero, right? In this example. So now, what about their ordinary income? 
So they've got 17,000, right? So that's the 12,000 from the pension, 5,000 from the IRA. That is taxed as ordinary income, okay? But they have that standard deduction. And this is as of last year, uh, the standard deduction was 27,700. So when we subtract that out, how much tax do they have on their income? They have zero, zero tax. So this couple in this scenario are, are in what we call the 0% tax bracket. And even people with a lot higher income and assets can they get here with good planning. But just to show you that, that there is such a thing as 0% tax. And so now this particular couple they were in need of a new car. And so they contacted their financial advisor and said, hey, we need to take a $25,000 distribution from our IRA because we need to make a, a, a car purchase. And their financial advisor said, okay, well, you know, there's, you know, it's pre-tax money, so there'll be some taxes on that. And they're like, yeah, right, okay, well, we'll, we'll deal with the taxes. And so they pull the money out and they buy the car. And so 25000 now needs to get added in to the provisional income for this year. And so we take 25000 we add that to the thirty two, and so now their new provisional income number is 57000 okay? So now they're way past the thresholds. Yeah, so you can clearly see they're way past 44000 right? So now we know that 85% of their Social Security benefits will be taxed as ordinary income. So now right here, we're going to take that. So how we calculate this, we're going to take 57,000 provisional income number. We're going to subtract out that first tier, 32,000. It gives us 25,000. We're going to times that by 0.5. It gives us 12,500. Okay. Then we take 57,000 again, subtract out the 44,000 tier. That gives us 13,000. We times that by 0.35. And that uh, gives us 4,000. 550. And then we add those together. So now with this, this decision that they made, $17,050 of their social security benefits are now subject to tax at, as ordinary income. Okay. Now that's only half of the equation in this example. Let's come over to the ordinary income side. Okay. So we had 17,000. It hasn't changed. And we added 25,000 to it. So now they have 42000 that's taxable. And again, we get to subtract out that standard deduction, which leaves 14300 So now we take these two numbers and they get added together. So 31350 is now the amount of money that they have that is subject to taxes. And so doing it this way, and this example was was not a good decision. It was an expensive decision because they could have saved easily over $3,000 in this case by just doing it with a couple of little strategies that were different. Um, and, you know, for example, one, one example of that would be, you know, how much does it cost to finance a car? Now you might be thinking, well, we don't want to have interest and we don't want to have debt, but you, you want to be careful that you don't, you know, strain it a gnat and swallow a camel. If they were to finance this car, let's say they got a three three year loan, and they they did this IRA distribution just over two years, so they they went ahead and took out half of the twenty five in year one, they pay it off, pay it towards that auto loan, and then they just have to wait till the next calendar year when they can take another distribution. Maybe that's a few months, maybe it's six months. At the very most, it would be twelve months worth of interest if they were doing it in January, right? And then they could take another distribution, pay, pay the loan off. So what do you think is greater, the, the tax percentages or interest rates? So if we had, say, a 6% on a car loan, they would have saved easily $3,000 in this in this simple example. And that's real money. So, that, so not only did they lose the 3000 but they lost the future gains on that money over time, which is significant over time, right? And so now this is just one example of one year. But many people, because of the way they're positioned, 
their retirement accounts and with RMDs and such, it's going to force them to be in a situation like this or worse every year. And so there's there's a significant amount of loss, money lost to taxes that, that could be avoided with some good planning. In that example, I showed the impact of just one decision in one year, and it was an expensive decision. But you could very easily be in that situation every year throughout retirement. For example, just one RMD can trigger multiple additional taxes depending on the state that you live in. There's the Social Security tax. There's the IRMA, Medicare surcharges. There's the 3.8% net investment income tax. There's potentially depreciation recapture. There's capital gains taxes to take into account and the absence of good tax loss harvesting. Because when you lose a dollar unnecessarily, you lose more than a dollar. You also lose the dollars that that dollar could have earned you in the future. The lost opportunity cost is really significant. With good proactive tax planning, saving $100,000 or $200,000 over your retirement is very realistic. We love to do this type of planning. My firm and my team of financial professionals uh, would love to give you a free consultation. No obligation. Just visit the financialfastlane.com and uh, you can schedule an appointment from there if, if you're interested. Either way, I hope you found this educational and I look forward to seeing you in the next episode of the Financial Fast Lane. 